Alright my friends, we are going to take a look at yet another game from the Polish Extra League, the first league. And this time I was playing against the Polish number three, Kasper Piorun. And I was playing with the black pieces. Kasper and I have played twice before, once a long time ago, I think 2007, that ended in a draw and once not so long ago, last year at the European Championship, and there he won when he also played with the white pieces. So let's get this game going. He started with e4 and I replied with e5 as I did in my game against Jacek Tomczak. In case you have not seen this yet. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Against Tomczak I played g6. But here I want to surprise my opponent once again by playing a new Roy Lopez line. And in this case, it was the move bishop c5, which is quite interesting. Black, for now, delays playing the move b5. In this case, or by doing so, taking away some options for white, for example, an early a4. However, there are additional options for white, as, for example, playing c3 and then b5, bishop c2 immediately. But my opponent, being surprised by my choice, decided to play it very safely here, very calmly, d3, which is definitely not a critical approach to, to beat the system of bishop c5. So d6, c3, castle, knight bd2, and black has a lot of different ways to play this position. Also, one typical plan is to go bishop a7, knight e7, knight g6. I played b5. And honestly, I wasn't too familiar with this position, but I found it very logical to prepare the push d5, which is the correct approach. I just chose a not so great move order maybe. So bishop e6, first of all, is a little trap. If white goes rook e1 here, there's knight g4, which is very strong. And the pawn is that after rook e2, bishop takes f2, um, takes knight e3, this is just not going to end well for white because I've picked up a pawn and I'll pick up another pawn and yes white will get two pieces for the for the rook but black gets a bunch of pawns and this is just very good so I guess I couldn't resist this little trap that I set but of course my opponent noticed that played h3 now h6 rook e1 rook e8 and maybe rook e8 is in, in, in the accuracy. I should play bishop b6 first to, and after knight f1 go d5. And this, I think, would transpose to what we'll see in the game. Or it could transpose at least. I think this would be the correct move order. Because of the rook e1, rook e8, knight f1, now white is threatening to play d4, d5. And I think white should be better then. Let's say bishop b6, d4. This looks like an edge for white. It's always or often the question in these Roy Lopez positions or also Italian positions, who's getting to play d4 or d5 first? And here I was thinking I'm first with d5, but white could have played d4 and this would have promised him an advantage. My opponent missed his chance, however. So this was the problem with my move order that my bishop is still on c5 and is getting hit by this pawn. So this is why this is working. My opponent missed this, took on d5, and I had kind of a luxury choice here with which piece to take back. All three recaptures, knight, bishop, or queen, look fine to me. In the end, I settled on queen takes d5. Knight g3, rook a d8, looks very natural to me, bringing all the pieces in the center. B4, bishop b6, a4, interesting and typical idea. And white has a strong, somewhat positional threat here. Let's say I play a nonsensical move like king h8, then white could play a5 and bishop e3. At least I was concerned about this right now as I'm seeing. The engine is not too concerned about it, but I didn't like this for, for black. And then white has access to the square on c5. So this is why I played prophylactically queen d6, also which makes sense in order to prepare knight d5. And hitting this pawn on c3 
in a way revealing the drawback of white going b4. So here there's no plan, no time for this plan of bishop e3 because I can take and after rook takes or f takes a knight can come to d5 potentially or maybe e4 is in the air. This is um, not a good way to play for white. So my opponent took on b5 which is fine and here my opponent blundered with the move knight h4. Typical idea in these positions but it just doesn't work at this point. Bishop d2 would be a normal move to play and the position is just equal in fact. It's difficult for both sides to make any progress. Black is looking very nicely here with his piece configuration but how to make progress if you play knight d5 you allow for example knight e4. So why was knight h4 a mistake? You see the engine bar reacting immediately on the left side indicating a black advantage. What can black play? Stop the video here and think about it. So there are two continuations both leading to the same position. In the game I played knight d4 but also knight takes b4 is the same thing. Funnily enough the DGT board for some reason um, marked knight takes b4 as the played move. However, I played knight d4. Anyway, it leads to the same position. By the way, the reason why I didn't play knight takes b4, what I thought was bishop a3 pinning the knight, but black has the strong answer queen c5. And this is just picking up more material here. Bishop takes b4, queen takes f2 check, king h2, and now the very nice and calm retreat queen f4 hitting the knight on f3, pinning this knight and after knight f3 there's knight h5 picking up this knight and it's huge trouble for white. In any case I did not play this move but we're getting to the same position now after c takes b4 and now queen d4. So this is the same position and we see the idea with this move I'm hitting three spots at the same time and I'm regaining the piece. So there's some important lines here to consider. Knight h5, bishop takes f5, bishop e3. Black is able to play queen d7 and protect the bishop on f5 and is then a healthy pawn up. Another line I had to check here was giving up the exchange with, well, how do you do it? Somehow there was a line in which white can sacrifice the exchange. So knight h f5, bishop takes f5, but now if knight takes f5 there's just queen takes f2. So there was some line that I calculated for a bit longer, but it seems I'm not able to... Ah, it was the new move knight e4, exactly. Exactly, knight e4. With the idea knight takes e4, bishop e3. Actually, even this is still possible, which I didn't realize during the game, queen b2. But in any case, black doesn't have to go for this anyway, because after knight e4, just queen takes a1. And this is what I was checking, if white has some play here against the king, but it's not enough. Black is just winning. So my opponent also realized this, and played bishop e3. Queen takes h4, bishop takes b6, c takes b6, and rook takes e5. White regains the pawn, but my pieces are much better prepared for the opening of the position, much more active, and black is clearly better. However, here I played a mistake. Rook d5 gives away part of the advantage. Queen takes b4, rook b1 is not really convincing, as I lose the pawn right away once again. But Queen d4 would have been strong. The pawn is after rook takes b5, bishop d7, the rook is trapped. No square on the fifth rank. So that means the rook has to retreat to e2, for example, and now I can take on b4. That's a healthy extra pawn, and black is much better. Rook d5 is also giving black an advantage but not as much. Here my opponent also made 
a mistake, d4. Instead, a move like rook e3 was what I expected, queen takes b4, and now bishop e3, rook d6, and we'll get to some position which in which black also is a pawn up, but white has some hopes against these um, weak pawns on the b file. So d4 was very surprising to me because obviously I can take this pawn and both both captures are good. But with me getting a little bit low on time, I felt queen takes d4, trading queens would be a good idea and I think it's a good practical choice. My opponent did not trade queens, he played queen b1. If queen takes b d4, rook takes d4, rook takes b5, then knight d5 puts the rook in an awkward position once again. This is possible, but rook a7 to stop bishop d7, but black also keeps an extra pawn here and I think has pretty good winning chances in this endgame. So let's see what happened. Rook takes d5, queen takes, now queen b1. And here the best move would have been to just go back to d4, keep an eye on this pawn on b4, have a really beautifully centralized queen. I played bishop d7 instead, which is also a decent move. I'm opening the e-file, sometimes I have ideas with bishop c6, so this was possible. Maybe best for white would be to put the bishop on d3 and put it on f1, protecting this spot on g2 as well as hitting the pawn. This would not be so easy to convert, I think. Bishop b3 is also fine here, again queen d4. Probably right away was best. I played queen d2. Now knight f1. And now I play queen d4. It made sense to me to first um, worsen the position of the knight, but maybe it's not really worsening because the knight can come back to e3. And this is what white absolutely needed to do here. Knight e3, bishop e6, bishop takes e6, rook takes e6, black has an extra pawn, but it is this double pawn on the b-file, so this will be a tough task to convert, but of course black can try for a very long time. In the game, rook a7 is just an outright blunder. It looks active, but it's neglecting black's idea, and here I can pretty much win. So once again, if you want to stop the video and try to figure out the winning variation, all the way to the end here and the important idea. So the obvious move is also the best one in this case, rook e2, hitting the pawn on f2, and now knight e3. It would have been better to insert this check first, but also then black should win in the long run. Knight e3, defending, and now queen f4 once again, threatening queen takes f2, Check on a8, bishop e8, and queen f1 is defending. And the important point here is rook takes e3. This is the winning combination because the bishop on b3 is undefended. So f takes e3, queen takes e3. Black just picks up this bishop together with another pawn. Two pieces for the rook. This is game over. So my opponent gave the bishop for the pawn on f7, but it doesn't change anything. My king is safe enough. I have the two pieces for the rook. Probably best would be queen f2 when, okay, trading queens is winning, not trading queens is winning. Black has a very nice choice here. King h1, bishop c6, rook a7 check. And now I play king g6. King g8 is also possible. It doesn't really matter that much. King g8, I didn't want to allow queen f5, even though, okay, here's also bishop e4 and nothing is happening. All the important squares are controlled. Anyway, king g6, now my opponent played queen b1, but this can be just answered by bishop e4, queen a2, and I pick up another pawn on h3, and my opponent had seen enough because, well, it's just too much material, weak king, and so on and so on. So there's no point in continuing this game. So I was quite happy with my win here because as you can see, I was playing against a very strong opponent rated 2660 
and I could beat him with the black pieces. Similarly to my game against Tomshak, I have not often beaten players rated above 2600 with the black pieces, which is usually much more difficult. Well, it's difficult enough to beat these guys, but with black, even more so. So I was quite happy with this game, especially finding the, the right combination with knight d4. And to me, it looked like a pretty straightforward game. Of course, there were some inaccuracies, but I never let the advantage completely slip and I could get this win for my team. So this concludes the series on the Polish Championship. I showed you four games of mine and if you have seen the other games, they went pretty well. But I also had some losses in the tournament. I lost also three games. So in the end, kind of leveled each other out. I won like three rating points, not a big deal. But for me, it was important to see that I can consistently beat very strong players, grandmasters and players rated above 2600, especially with the black pieces, because like I said, I have not been able to do this before. If you have any question about this game, just let me know. Also make sure to check out the other game analysis and then I'll see you soon again for the coverage of the World Cup. Until then.